we're still in the middle of our uh, study in the book of Psalms, a hiding place. We've been talking about you needing, you need to find that place where you can just unplug from the world and to go spend with God and get charged, recharged by him. And today, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Psalm chapter 91. I think this psalm ties in with Easter so well. And here in a little bit, kiddos, I got something for you. You're going to have to come up here in just a little bit. So just be patient with me. I got something really fun. We'll read verses 1 through 2. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Sister Betty, would you say a prayer for the word? What a wonderful special day. Breakfast and just things are not of the normal schedule. But then should they ever be? Right? <laughs> when we seek the Almighty, we are seeking an adventure like you've never known before. You seek the face of the Almighty. You experience love that you've never experienced before. It is not normal. And joy that you've never experienced before. It's not normal. There's nothing normal about God. And I think, though, everyone here in this room knows what it means to be afraid. Yes? Some of our fears are very trivial. Like my wife, Crystal, she fears spiders. She may not think that's very small (laughs) or trivial. Some of us, our fears are bigger, losing a job, sickness in the family. We are afraid for our children. We worry over them. I, yes, I was the, the, that parent who thought if I could just get them through elementary school, things will be easy. Then I was, if I can just get them through middle school. Then if I get, now they're out of high school, I think I'm done worrying about them, right? No. No. (laughs) We're afraid of losing loved ones. Our world is filled with people controlled by fear, worry, and anxiety. That is why the self-help section in all the bookstores are immense. We want handles on the world, but we can't quite seem to find that answer. Then comes Psalm 91. God get right, gets right to the heart of the matter. And he says to you today, if you're afraid, if you're worried, you are safe. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That name we talked about earlier is El Shaddai. He is almighty, powerful to meet whatever need you may have. And he's ready to provide them. Psalm 91 tells us all we need to know. The safest place in the world is in the shadow of God Almighty. But that means we need to draw near enough to him to rest in his shadow, which is why we need a hiding place. Yes, we talk to God on the highways. I need God's help for patience on the highways. But we need that time where we just unplug and get away from the news and from all the stuff that's going on and get into the shadow of the Almighty. 
We continue verse 3 through 4. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. The shield, when the, when the people read this, they were imagining kind of like the Roman shield. It covered you from head to toe, and a rampart was like a, a fortress built around you. This is what it's like to be a follower of God. He doesn't always promise to remove our struggles from us. He rescues us many times in the middle of the struggle. That's what his word promises us. Verse 5 through 6. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midnight. The writer decides to include a list of fears that really trouble him. Some of us are afraid of the night, darkness. We're afraid of sickness. Verse 7 through 8. A thousand may fall at your right side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. This is an apparent scene of some battle that this, this psalmist writes. Today we can have a thousand worries here and 10,000 worries there. Maybe you've seen this commercial. Yes, I watch a lot of TV. The commercial is about dedication. And this, this dad, you can tell, is clearly at night. He has the bedroom light on, and you assume that his daughter, he's got a little girl, she's in bed. And he begins to do his work on his computer. When all of a sudden you hear a scream, and he gets ready to go upstairs, but he goes back for his computer, and on the wall, you can see a picture that was drawn by a young person and on this picture you see a monster that's underneath the bed and so obviously you come to the conclusion that she's afraid of this monster that's under her bed so he grabs his computer the next scene she is completely out totally asleep just as peaceful as can be not worried not scared and then they move the camera down and they show you why because dad is laying on the ground underneath the bed, typing away on his computer. <laughs> what happened? Her fear was sized up against her help. Her dad was bigger. Her dad was more comforting. Her dad brought peace to her, and then all of a sudden, her fear was not so great anymore because her dad was right there. She was able to sleep. This passage does not promise to remove all our trouble. This passage in Psalm chapter 91 does not belittle our fears either. But I would hope that it helps us to maybe size up our help compared to our struggles. Our help compared to our worries and things that we're afraid of. Because we have a heavenly father who speaks stars into existence. You can't tell me there is a trouble in your life that he can't handle. John 16 and 33, Jesus tells us, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. That's a promise, right? Nowhere in the Bible does it say if you're a Christian, if you belong to God, you will never experience heartache or trouble. That's not a promise. But take heart, he says, I have overcome the world. Here's what our great God does. Our trouble may not always be removed, but he can and does and will and promises to remove our fear and our worry and our anger.
anxiousness and replaces it with peace. That's a promise from him. And God is no liar. The safest place to be is in the shadow of the almighty God. All right, kiddos, come on up here. Come on up here. I got something fun. Come on, come on, come on. You can sit down right here, right around in here. Do a little half moon circle. Yes, yes. This is going to be really, really good. All right. I have here an empty mug, okay? What usually goes into something like this? Co co coffee? You guys should not be drinking coffee. Root beer float, that's more like it. Or Mountain Dew. All right, if I take this cup and I hold it over someone's head, she wasn't really afraid, was she? No. How, how about you? No. No. <laughs> it's empty. It's not, you know. What are some fears that maybe you guys have? You know, I told you about my wife, Crystal. She's afraid of spiders. Are you, I love you love monsters? Okay. Okay, does he afraid of monsters? Snakes, she's afraid of snakes. Snakes and spiders? Oh, yeah. We're afraid of snakes and animals. Huh? Okay. You guys, any anybody here afraid of the dark? Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. How, how many of you guys are afraid of tests at school? All right, we got one. <laughs> How many are you afraid of getting a lot of homework? Oh, my goodness, I need to go to your school. All right, yes. Yeah, so we have, sometimes we have a lot of fears about some things. And now what if I hold this over someone's head? Oh, she's moving a little bit now, isn't she? <laughs> How about we do Rio? Oh, he's not afraid. All right. I do need you guys to step back just a little bit because I did succeed with this multiple times, but I have had a failure. But what do we do when we get afraid? Do you guys know what we do when we get afraid? Run away. That's a good one. That's a very good one. You know, the Bible tells us we can run away from something and run to something and someone. Do you know who that is? Jesus. We can, when we're afraid, we can run away from what we're afraid of and run to Jesus. But how do we do that sometimes? We pray. And so sometimes we might be uh, afraid of a lot of things. And so what we do is we cover this with prayer. And then we'll see what happens when we pray. Let's pray that this works. When we pray, when we pray, yes, when we pray, what we don't see sometimes, you can't see it in here. There's some air in here. And we have a helper that God has sent us. Does anybody know who that helper is? It's Jesus. But when Jesus left, he sent us a helper. It's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not someone that we see, just kind of like this air. What happens, and this is kind of science, I like science. I know we're not in school, but what happens is that all this air, when you flip it over, that air sucks the thing up to the, the, the cup and it keeps the water from pouring out. Well, we have a helper named the Holy Spirit. And when we pray to God, when we're afraid or when we're alone, we pray to God and guess who helps us? The Holy Spirit. It reminds us how much he loves you, how much you don't need to be afraid you know what the most common command in the bible jesus said and god said fear not don't be afraid don't be afraid in his bible in math in in what we just read in, in um, john chapter 16 says don't be afraid be brave let's pray 
bow your heads. Father God, I pray that you will just let this lesson uh, just enter into their hearts and their minds, Lord. Because we know that they get afraid and we know that they feel lonely. And we just pray that you will let your spirit rest upon their hearts and their minds and that you would in that moment let them feel your presence, let them feel your love, and let them know, let this seed be planted in them as they get older, dear God. Let them know they're not alone. You are very near to them. Bless them. We thank you in your name. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back to your seats. Right. For us, there's a story in the book of Acts. I was going to say, I didn't think that was that funny of a line. <laughs> There's a story in the book of Acts in chapter 9. There's a gentleman named Paul. This moment, he hasn't been converted. He's, He's persecuting Christians, hunting them down, throwing them in prison, executing some of them even. And on the way to a town of Damascus, he was on his way there to do the same to some more. And then Jesus appeared to him. And it's something amazing that stuck out to me when he when he told Paul. In Acts chapter 9, verse 4, I don't have it for you, Leo, so don't look for it. He says, why are you persecuting me? That stuck out to me. Because, see, Paul was throwing other people into jail. Paul was executing other people. Why didn't Jesus say, Paul, why are you hounding these people? Jesus didn't say, why are you doing this to your fellow men? Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? What stuck out to me about that was how God identifies with his own. He steps in place for his own. So that's why Jesus didn't say, why are you being mean to those people? Jesus is more than just empathetic for what you're going through. He identifies with you. He is with you. He tells Paul, why are you persecuting me? Are you joined to Jesus this way? Psalm 91 describes God's people as those who dwell or abide under God's protection. Psalm 14 through 16 really sums up today, Easter for us. Are you ready to hear this? I hope you're ready to receive it. If you're someone right now who is struggling and and you're worried and you're you're afraid and you're anxiousness, know this, God does not belittle you for feeling those things. But God is ever more so powerful to help you with those things. Listen to his word. Let this speak to your heart. Verse 14 through 16, Psalm 91. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. You notice he doesn't promise to remove it all the time. He goes farther than that. Even better than that, he promises to be with us. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. In light of John 3, 16 and many other passages in the New Testament, will you put that up for us, Leo? Many of us know this, but this is a story of Easter. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 
We can know more fully now that God's protection is experienced. But only by those who trust in Jesus. Jesus came to rescue us from our fiercest enemies, death, hell, a judgment from a holy God. But also he came to rescue us from fear and worry and anxieties. Jesus accomplished this by living the perfect sinless life, his sacrificial death as our substitute, and his triumphant resurrection. Praise the Lord. That should get us excited. And now all who believe on him, all who run to him are safe. This is the gospel message. We celebrate it today. We should celebrate the gospel message every day, every year. Because apart from faith in Jesus, we are without adequate shelter. We need to remind ourselves that. If I step out from under the shadow of the Almighty, I am now on my own strength, on my own wisdom. And I can tell you, speaking from personal experience, that's not good. I need his wisdom. I need his strength. I need his refreshing Holy Spirit. I need him every day, every hour, every minute. Why do I convince myself that I can live this life without him? I think sometimes trouble reminds us of that. We want to curse trouble, but trouble reminds us that we have a big heavenly father who's bigger than our worries. When, we're, when life is going good, we tend to forget that. We shouldn't curse the trouble. Listen to how the psalmist describes God's people. Verse 14, their hearts are set on God and they know him by name. Some of you guys are new here, so you haven't heard this story. Years ago when I was in high school, Charles Barkley, he came for a fundraiser. Some of you guys may not know who Charles Barkley is, but he was a great basketball player. He's an analyst now. They, they called him the, the, the big mound of rebound, and he, he was a great basketball player. But he came to Olathe for a fundraiser, fundraiser. And I had six period gym. He came a little early. So guess who got to play basketball with Charles Barkley? That's right, right here. <laughs> and you don't realize how big these guys are until you see them in real life. Because, you know, compared to, to some of the other basketball players, Charles Barkley is kind of an average height person. But I could see why they called him the big mound of rebound. He was a huge man. And, and I got to play basketball with him, and it was a great story. I tell that to everybody. It's a, it was a great moment in my life. It's a good memory. But what if, suppose, he came to Olathe again, and I went up there and said, hey, Chuck, remember me? <laughs> remember me? I played basketball with you. It was 1992. <laughs> He's not going to know me from Adam. You can't call me Chuck. I don't know you. Those who love the Lord, they know him by name. Verse 15, they are rescued and honored by God. Verse 16, they are satisfied and shown his salvation. Today, you can know this salvation in Jesus. Today, you can know this mighty rock who will shelter you in the middle of trouble, keep you from trouble. And one day he's going to return and he will keep us from all trouble. God doesn't just tolerate you. He loves you. Jeff and Anita, you want to come get ready? 
This is the Easter story. Psalm 91 tells us that God is your security in the middle of troubles. In taking Christ by faith, you choose the better part. It's God himself. It's better than the most beautiful dream sequence you can ever imagine in your life. We know there are people who've been kissed with the great life in this world. They're not happy. God is better than the absence of problems. He is more fulfilling than the absence of problems. And he is ready, ready to be with you. David Platt said, sometimes in his mercy, God rescues us from suffering. We can pray for grace, for help in all forms. But sometimes in his mercy, God rescues us in suffering. He keeps us. He holds us. He sustains us. If he can suspend the universe in his hand, he can help you with your troubles. However, in a little while, God would yet rescue us from all suffering. This is what Psalm 91 and 16 is all about. Let's read it again. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You'll have an opportunity if you'll bow your heads. We'll let the uh, Spirit speak to your heart. We'll have an opportunity to come up to the altar and you can discuss some, th some things with the Lord. But if there's some fears and some worries and some anxieties that you've been carrying around, know this, you don't have to carry those around anymore. Romans 3, 24 through 25, after I read this, the altars will be open and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. To be received by faith, he did this to demonstrate his righteousness. Whatever the Spirit put on your heart today, please come and discuss it with the Lord. The altars are open. Let's pray. Think about your Think about your worries right now. Imagine them. Let them come to your, your head. And now think of God, your shelter, your shield, your protector. Which is bigger? Our fears don't have the last word. Death does not have the last word. Thank you to Jesus who rose from the grave, who died for my sins, rose from the grave. Death does not have the final word. Jesus is the shelter of the Most High. Jesus has conquered death. And Jesus will never leave you. Jeff, would you say a prayer? Heavenly Father, Most High and Powerful, Almighty, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, We love you. We praise you. We thank you for your spirit here. We thank you, God, for sending your son for us that we may be saved. We're not worthy of your love, Lord, but we thank you for it, God. Thank you for your lavish love in our lives, God. You are so good. Be with us this week. Be with us as we be with our families eating some awesome food, I'm sure. We love you. We want to take you all through the week. And we need you, and we can't do this without you. In your name, we all say amen. Amen. You guys have the bulletins, so you have the announcements. We do have open prayer tomorrow. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for all of the volunteers, everything that you guys have done to participate this week. We had almost 150 people from the community come to our egg hunt yesterday. Thank you for all your candy donations, your egg, everything you guys have done for us. We were able to share the, the story of Easter with kids. We even issued a challenge to the parents yesterday. 
And it was because of your goodness and your prayers. And we just thank you. Thank you all. Now, I pray that you go have a wonderful Easter with your family. And let us be mindful and have joy in our hearts. Jesus is alive. You're dismissed.